of God which went before the camp of Israel removed every time in your life you get to a point where it looks like God is not there every time you look ahead and you don't see the sign of his cloud every time you listen for his cry or for his word you don't hear anything stand still there is a reason are you hearing this the bible says the cloud that was leading them the angel of god the presence of god that was leading them removed from there and every time he moved they were to stop when they saw him moving they moved the bible says the lord removed from there he was busy when you get to that point you don't feel that presence you pray and it looks like nothing is happening in the realm of the spirit something is happening someone is coming from behind you (laughs) hallelujah and look at it here verse 19 and the angel of god which went before the camp of israel removed and went behind them he went behind them hey and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them and it came between the camp of the egyptians and the camp of israel oh man look at it and it was a cloud and darkness to egypt but it gave light by night to this the same cloud was to the people of the world a darkness but to the people of god a light the same cloud are you still in this place the bible tells us that abraham went upon the mountain of god as he stood there he looked at sodom burning but when lot a man of the flesh looked at the same sodom his wife looked and turned into a pillar of salt god said don't look back these were canal men they couldn't see he said escape and they ran but lot's wife looked and when she looked at sodom she turned into a pillar of salt yet abraham was looking at the same sodom god will open your eyes in these next few days you will see things in the realm of the spirits that the canal man cannot see are you hearing me what is to the world of darkness will be a light to you can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Glory to his name forever. Yes. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now notice the next very important part. What did Noah do? Remember, he walked with God. He walked with God. And we're going to teach you how to walk with God in the realm of your finances. You did not get to where you are financially by chance. Something brought you to where you are now. You are no longer in the world. You have come into Christ. You must live by the principles of the kingdom. You are the one who can look at Sodom and still stand. (laughs) Hallelujah. The more the flood, Montag, let me show you. Glory. Go to Genesis chapter number 7. Let me show that to you. Genesis chapter 7. Are you there? From verse 17. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth. And the waters increased. And burnt up the ark. And it was lifted up above the earth. And the waters prevailed. And were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went upon the face of the waters. The more the flood, the higher the ark went. The more the flood, the higher the ark went. As the waters increased... The ark went higher. (laughs) Oh, hallelujah. 
But Noah walked with God. Tell somebody, Noah walked with God. I said he walked with God. He walked with God. There's one more point coming. See, he walked with God. That means he obeyed the principles of the kingdom. The principles were revealed to him and he walked with God. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Sing that one more time. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. For there's no other to be happy, Jesus. Kabaya. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust. You know what Job said? Though he slay me, yet will I follow him. The man had discovered something. Look at Noah. In a corrupt society. In a violent environment. He walked with God. Was he happy at last? Talk to me now. I said, was he happy at last? He was in the ark. The flood was destroying others. But the same flood was lifting him higher. (laughs) The same flood. And while inside that ark, he was sustained by God. He was sustained. Say, Koba, Lehman, Babrata says. I don't know if you ever read Isaac blessing his son Jacob when he blessed him with words with words he blessed Jacob he spoke words upon him he said I give you the blessing of my father Abraham and and when he had blessed him and had gone his brother Esau came and said daddy and he said hey I've already blessed your brother Then he said something that's so, oh boy. He said, and I have sustained him with plenty of corn and wine. He said, I have sustained him. A man is talking. Isaac, he had come to the point where he knew that when you know God, his word becomes him in you. He said, I have sustained him. Listen, this is a man sending his son into the world. He tells his brother, I have sustained him with plenty. Listen, the Bible does not tell us that he carried corn and gave to Jacob. He spoke words. He said, wherever you go, the presence of my This is the presence of the God of Abraham will go with you. He said, I have sustained him. How? By saying to him, you are blessed. Everything that you ever require is yours. A man was speaking. And then he said to Israel, he said, I have blessed him. And yea, he shall be blessed. (laughs) He said, and I cannot reverse it. It cannot be changed. 
It cannot be changed. Look at Jacob. A rascal. A rascal. But he was a blessed man. He was not perfect in his ways, but he was a blessed man. He was even a cheat, but he was a blessed man. We'll show you why he was such a blessed man. Are you still in this place? Do you think Jacob or Isaac was more worthy of the kingdom of God than yourself? Listen, I am loaded. I didn't come to collect something from you. No, 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 no. No, I didn't come to collect something from you. I'm loaded. I came from Lagos to give you something. No, listen. You, 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 you've seen our TV programs. How many times have you heard me crying for money? Send me money, otherwise I wouldn't be on air next week. Have you heard me talk like that? Loaded. In every station. Yeah. Hallelujah. In every station where we are all over the world, every station, we pay ahead of time. Not behind. We don't beg them for one more week before we'll, we'll send you money. No. Ahead of time. In Europe, they are amazed that we'll pay ahead of time. In Canada, the man could not believe it when we said, we'll pay you ahead. No credit card. We'll pay you ahead. How? The fear of Isaac. That's what Jacob called him. He called him the fear of Isaac. Hallelujah. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's not dead. He's the man who can change you. Listen, as you're sitting there tonight, he will alter your destiny. Why you were going like this to destruction, you will suddenly be going like this. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why we came. I'm telling you, that's why we came. We came to put this thing in your hand. We came to put it right in your heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You will come to the point in your life where... Hey, are you ready for the last one here let's see something in Genesis chapter number 6 let's see what God said in uh, in verse 17 again I, I read from 17 into 18 and behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life. Remember, God's talking to Noah here. And then he says, wherein is the breath of life? From under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee. <laughs> hey! But with thee. There's a difference. But with thee, with thee, everybody say, with thee, with thee, but with thee will I establish my covenant. Oh my. With thee will I establish my covenant. God says, I'm going to destroy everyone else, but with you, a flood of economic disasters coming, a flood of hunger is coming. A flood of penury is coming. A flood of poverty is coming. But with you will I establish my covenant. How can God do it? Underline that place. Go to Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy. But with you with you say with me with me with me, me. me. alright right, look at it here verse 18 chapter 8 Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 
But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Ah, to do what? That he may establish his covenant. Now, God says, and listen, he says, it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant. In other words, if God is going to establish his covenant, he will give you power to get wealth so that the covenant will be established. That means power to put. Listen, the anointing of God's spirit is talking to you. He's talking about, he looked at the whole world. It was corrupt. There was violence. There was wickedness. He said, Noah, with you, I will establish my covenant. What does that mean? It means you will produce righteousness. You will produce righteousness. I'm going to join myself with you so you can produce righteousness in your environment. Now he says, he gives you power to get wealth so that you can produce righteousness. You can establish the covenant, establish righteousness, establish the presence of God in your environment. How can God deal with the corruption? How can God deal with the violence? How can he deal with the wickedness? By giving you power to get wealth. That he may produce righteousness. Oh my. (laughs) It's here. It's in the word. Thank you Lord Jesus. Let me just show that to you quickly. Listen. Understand. What is the power to get wealth? To know God's principles and understand his teachings. We have to go to the book of beginnings. Every great truth of the kingdom of God will be found or traced to the book of Genesis. If in Deuteronomy he said, God gives you power to get wealth. The people should ask. What is the power to get wealth? He must have revealed it before. Since they did not ask any question. There must have been such evidence in the word of God. What is the power to get wealth? What power is it that gets wealth? There is the power to plow. There is the power to build. There is the power to swim. Are you hearing me? Different kinds of power. But now he's talking about power to get wealth. There is a wealth making power. Now the first man he told, I want you to establish my covenant. I want to establish my covenant with you. We are going to produce righteousness. That man was the first man that God revealed this principle to. Because in his days, there was such wickedness. And God wanted to produce righteousness instead of corruption and wickedness. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 tells us what power is wealth making power. It is called seed power. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said it is called seed power. Everybody call it seed power. He says, why the earth remains, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. Listen, he revealed to them wealth producing power that will produce righteousness. I'm going to show it to you in the New Testament. Just get ready. Just get ready. Seed power is the wealth producing power of God. Tell somebody, seed power power. is the wealth producing power of God. Do you know that the Bible declares that the word of God is seed? The word of God is seed. The word of God is the seed of God. So he understands seed power. And he revealed it to this man. He said, while the earth remains, 
Seed time and harvest time shall not cease. How do we know this is working in the New Testament and that it will actually establish righteousness? In other words, establish his covenant. His covenant is called the covenant of righteousness. You have to understand that. It's called the covenant of righteousness. Second Corinthians chapter 9. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Oh boy. Next time you find a seed, you will know what to do with it. I'm telling you, next time you see a seed, when God gets a seed into your hand and you have it, you will know that you can produce righteousness with it, you will know you're about to do something that the kingdom of God will shake up anywhere when you take that thing in your hand. Come on, get ready. Second Corinthians chapter 9. I want to read to you from verse 8. Ready? Verse 7 is, is powerful, but I, I, I'll share that with you another day. Verse 7. So you mark it and wait. <laughs> Did you hear me? But I want to read from verse 8. And God, everybody say God. God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Boy, I, I, if I took off on that, you, you'd be here till 12. <clears throat> Verse 9, as it is written, he had dispersed abroad. He had given to the poor. Look at me. This is my picture. This is me. He's talking about me. I said, man, he's talking about me. I don't know about you now. Come on. I said, he's talking about me. As it is written, he had dispersed abroad. Hey. While I'm here right now. Someone somewhere in the United Kingdom, someone in Belgium, someone in the Netherlands is hearing welcome to Atmosphere for Miracles while I'm here now. You understand what I'm talking about? No, we didn't beg them to put us on air. We paid for it. Are you still there? Okay. Hey. As it is written, verse 9, he had dispersed abroad, he had given to the poor, his righteousness remained forever. Look at that. 